Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. It's time for our hot topic, and we're talking about Tinubu rolls out ransom payment for victims of school abduction. Joining me to have a conversation is Augustine Egger, is a security expert. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. It's my pleasure. Okay. So we're talking about ransom payments. Um, uh, a few days ago, some about 200 uh, um, school children were being abducted from their school. And now the president has come out to make a statement saying there should be no ransom payment. But before we get into that, I want to talk about um, what do you think is a factor that has caused the rise? Because you're seeing this happen year in, year out. In fact, um, every other week, someone is being abducted, someone is being kidnapped, and some of them make it into the news, but we can only imagine the ones that don't. So obviously, there is a rise in this. So I just want you to work me through some factors that has probably caused um, you know, this menace of a situation that we're facing in a country like this. Yes, uh, I think it's something that we all know uh, that uh, uh, criminals will always attack a soft target. So adopting up to 300 uh, students from a school uh, shows that they know the vulnerability of, uh, of those schools and that before security agencies will come, they will have achieved their aim. So I believe that all this while that uh, from the chief of experience till now, the government of this O should have been proactive enough to beef up security in some of these schools. Not paying ransom by principle, it is right not to pay ransom. Uh, but it also left uh, for those who are involved in this kidnapping, I mean the victims, the families of the victims, to decide what they want. In a system where security is working, everything is working. I'm sure that the government will come to the aid of those who within, within 24 or 48 hours. But the case in Nigeria is different. Uh, which is why I, I, I don't know what the Mr. President has put in place, put in place to ensure that uh, uh, that statement, uh, the law enforcement can actually work to achieve that. Mm. So we're talking about 287 um, pupils, and now the, the kidnappers have issued, you know, a deadline of March 27 for one billionaire ransom to be paid. Um, would, you, would you say that with people paying ransom over time, this has even become a factor whereby you know, kidnappers think this is a lucrative business for them because as long as I kidnap you, we don't have um, security agencies that can, you know, um, just get these people out in 24 to 48 hours, like you've said. And so they just take it and say, yes, we know that we're going to get the money regardless. And that's the reason why we're seeing a rise of this at the moment. Yes. Um, it, it has become a thriving business. A thriving industry, as uh, we can see right from uh, uh, the Chibok issue till today, it shows that when a when a situation continues to reoccur, it shows that there is no mitigation of that risk from the national level, and so uh, the industry is growing wider, is spreading to the north, is spreading to the south, to the south south, to the southeast, everywhere in Nigeria is a thriving industry, uh, such that. If you have uh, figured out where you could keep your victims and you make demands, and you know that that money will come. Uh, but federal government on their part, I, I think if they have, uh, we, have been, we have been conversing on this uh, using technology, convergence is security, convergence is security, using technology and physical uh, te uh, security. So they know the weaknesses that in terms of technology, our, our, our system is weak, especially those that fight crimes. Uh, they equipped with technology because where they are, you can never identify where they are except by the use of technology. So since uh, the, the chief of experience, I would have expected government that by now that we have developed a lot of countermeasures against this kind of recurrence. Mm. 
Okay, so, I mean, one thing that you said that I just took and was quite alarming to me was the industry is growing wider. In fact, I had to write it down, and that's, that's quite sad because what does that say for Nigerians? You would expect that, you know, the lives and properties of Nigerians would be protected at all costs. I mean, that's what the government should owe us, you know, being safe in our country. But now you're seeing the industry becoming wider, which is quite sad. But I wanted to get your comment on this statement being made by the president. Um, some people argue that it's quite insensitive. Um, what do you think about this? And if you were to rate our security agencies, um, the law enforcement agencies that we have on their effectiveness and proactiveness, how would you rate them? Hmm. I, the, the, law, the law enforcement can only, you cannot give what you don't have. Hmm. At the point at which they can achieve, they can achieve. But like I say, are they equipped with the right technology to fight this kind of uh, crime? So if they are not equipped with technology, they can really not do much. But in terms of physical training, I can assure you that our law enforcement and our military, they are well trained physically. But they need to back up with advanced technology to deal with this industry that is growing like a wildfire. My last is, if the government doesn't want us to pay, doesn't want you know the families of these victims to pay um, ransom, then what other alternatives do they have? Because if you're telling me that you know my a family member or a friend of mine has been abducted by kidnappers, and you're telling me not to pay ransom, you're pretty much asking me to not do anything and just leave them. So if the kidnappers were going to kill them, it's as, it's as good as me saying my final goodbyes at this moment. So what, what do you think the government needs to do at this moment um, to ensure that we're safe, the alternative measures to just curb kidnapping as a whole and ensure that you know, it's not a thriving industry for these people anymore? I, I think uh, there is no government that will admit that uh, you should pay a ransom. It's admission of failure on their part to provide uh, security and safety for the life and security of Nigerians and the, or the citizens. So no, no government will ever increase, uh, approve that. Like I said, in principle, it is a no thing. Uh, uh, but from that's why I'm like I'm surprised. Uh, uh, by the time we should have. Um, uh, those units. Of course, we have those counter-terrorism units. They have them. But I just wonder what advanced uh, training are they receiving or what equipment do they have? But except they have the equipment to fight this and they have the modern technology to fight this, I think um, they, it is left for the citizens to decide if their government is proactive enough to defend them. Because why some people pay this ransom is that they don't have confidence uh, in the government or the law enforcement. And that is why they go their own way to negotiate and to pay. Uh, but if the system is working the way it is, if the law, the response time is very quick, I'm sure people will depend on them. But the, the response time is weak. The response time is almost not, not there. And so... Uh, this, uh, some of these who are kidnapped are breadwinners, their children, and uh, they just want to do everything to get their to get their loved ones out of that situation because they don't they don't trust the government. Mm. Well, um, I said this earlier in the show, and I said I just hope that you know these school children and even other people who have been kidnapped would be able to um, get back to their families safely. And I hope that the government will have more proactive measures to ensure that this doesn't happen again. Um, even though, as, as I'm saying it right now, I'm even scared for what will happen in the next few weeks and you know the headlines that we might be seeing in the papers. But we're hoping that this menace will stop in Nigeria and Nigeria will become a safe country for everyone. We want to say thank you for coming and just speaking to us. Thank you so much, Augustine. Uh, my pleasure. Thank you. All right. We we're speaking with Augustine Ega. He's a security expert. And we're talking about the president's statement where he said um, there should be no ransom payment for the victims of school um, abduction. Anyways, we'll go on a short break. When we return, we'll be looking at our next hot topic. Please stay with us. <laughs>